everybody, it's Tammy, your friendly and very well-rested blind mouse at Lexa Battle about technology. As you can see, I'm still alive. I've made it to day four of my first ever self-imposed blind mouse blitz, and that's where I post or attempt to post, upload and edit a video, one video every day of this week. And now that's actually shrunk. Originally, I was going to, I was really ambitious. I was going to try and do seven, but I've uh, decided that I need to do other things in my life. So I am going to just do five this week. And so I'll probably skip Friday and I'll upload uh, the next video on Saturday. So I have a video on my regular day as well. But uh, today's video is all about the visor magnifier for iOS. You may have seen a few weeks ago I did a review of the Android version which has its challenges and so uh, a few days ago the creators of the app actually contacted me and asked me to consider reviewing the iOS version and um, I was already on my list of things to do anyway but uh, as a thank you they have given me several app store codes specifically for downloading the, the app on the iOS store and I'm going to give those away to you as my subscriber so check out my blog or my vlog rather there's uh, all the details in my last a blog post. So before I get to the details of the of the review itself, uh, just a little bit of history behind the app. The Visor app was actually uh, started by one of the creators whose dad had several strokes and lost all his vision because of the strokes and he really struggled watching his dad struggle. And one day he and his dad were at their local optometrist office and they were checking out the very expensive and overpriced magnifiers that are available for visually impaired people. And his dad turned to him and said, why can't these be, be as easy as your iPad? And so that got him thinking. And so then he teamed up with the other two uh, creators. So it's three of them all together. There's Sebastian, Andre, and Christian. So they teamed up and uh, 12 prototypes and six months later in December of 2014 they released the app into the iOS app store and or the iTunes app store rather and uh, now it's also available in Google Play so I'm told the iOS version is a lot better than the Android version we'll see how it stacks up that's coming up next low on vision high on tech circle of the blind mice.com <laughs> Okay, so we're on my iPad, and before I get into the pros and cons of the iOS version of the Visor Magnification app, first I'm just going to show you the layout because there are some key differences between the iOS and Android versions. So at first glance, the layout looks identical. You've got the same three color-coded very large buttons on the right-hand side. Blue is for, to change the colors, and there are still four... Uh, pardon me, five color modes. There's true color, black text on white, white text on black, blue text on yellow, and yellow text on blue. There are still four magnification modes. So there is the uh, the normal, ma there's, there's like no magnification. Then there is level one, level two. Let me try that again. Normal, level one, level two, level three. And then we have the red button, which is the focus button, but you can also automatically focus by just tapping on the screen as well. It's also 100% compatible with voiceover. Contrast, button, contrast, 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 zoom, button, zoom, zoom, button. Oh, it's so beautiful how it does not lag with this. It's awesome. And even tapping the screen works with voiceover focus. Focus. to focus. There are two key differences though. One is very, very cool and I'll get to that in just a second. But uh, first, the one difference is the red button does not function as a flashlight on the iPad version. On the iPhone it does, but the it just it can't access the LED on the iPad for whatever reason. I'm sure it's something to do with Apple and all their control that they have over their various things, but uh, it is what it is. But if you use it in, in fairly good lighting, as you can see here, it uh, shows up pretty pretty well. So, but the really, really cool thing, and now with this we're starting to get into the, 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 pardon me, the pros, is if you tap and hold the yellow button and then drag it out to the left, it then brings in view a camera so then you, if you just carefully focus, try to hold your iPad still, and then tap on the camera, 
it'll take a picture. But it gets even better than this. Where the red button was, it turns into that little save icon. And if you tap it, you get the option to, to share, which is showing sideways now because I had my iPad the other way. So let's turn it this way. So it brings up the share box where you can send it in an iMessage, you can send an email, put it on notes, send it to Twitter, Facebook, etc. So that is very, very cool. And if you decide that you don't like the picture, you can just press the X to delete it. But it still gets even cooler than this. What you can do, and I sort of just totally stumbled upon this by accident. Now that you've got the picture, you are free to zoom in and zoom out. And you can even zoom. I believe that's bigger than what I had in the first place. So this is amazing. And so... Look, you can now look at the top. I mean, it's, it's not crystal clear, but it's still, you know, it's readable. And I'm sure if I had, ha if my hands were more steady and I was holding it at a better angle, that would look even better. But look down here, this text is like perfectly clear. And while you're in the picture, you can use the color option to go to whatever your color combination of choice is. So this is perfect for the black and yellow settings because then you can look at those colors with less blur of course that's way blurred up there but that's my fault not the app's fault is because i had it at an angle and probably moved a little bit but let's uh let's delete this picture and i'll try i'll try taking a picture again and this time i'm going to actually stand up so i can have the ipad as level as possible let me find the page and I find it easier to see this with it being uh, white. So let me, just so I can find it and let me zoom out. So for taking the picture, I don't think it really matters how far zoomed in you are because of course you can zoom out and in, in after. So we'll take that, drag this out and try to hold this really, really still. Okay, and let's take a look. Okay, so I was a bit off center, <laughs> but you know, play around with it. But now let's look at the top of the page. Wow, that is really, really clear. And let's uh, let's um, do the color here again. So we got the black uh, background with the white text, and that is amazingly clear. And the yellow looks good. The yellow text on blue, the text is, seems like it's a little, why does that look like a little thin to me? So, eh, let me just, I'm just scrolling through the colors just to, it must be my vision because it like, it's the same text, it's just being colored differently and for some reason my eyes don't like that yellow text on blue so that's that could just be my vision or that's just that color combo just doesn't look work very well for me I find that yellow text harder to read on the blue but if you've got some if the type of visual impairment that you need that is probably what looks perfect for you uh, whereas what looks good for me with the yellow or pardon me with the white and black and the black and white might not look good to somebody else so but amazing clarity but it gets even better than that. If you go into your AirPlay settings and enable AirPlay to your Apple TV if you have one, and then enable mirroring, which will be just below your Apple TV, you can actually stream your iPad with the contents of the magnifier to your Apple TV and they're in, they specifically added support for this function in an effort to replace you know the expensive CCTVs that cost thousands of dollars and um, it works great there there's very little there's, there's little it's a little bit slower going on the Apple TV I found um, compared to being on your iPad but very very minimal that the difference is negligible so uh, you know everything works fine the cool thing is when you're looking at it on your Apple TV is the buttons disappear so all you get is the magnification then on your Apple TV but everything works the colors work the magnification levels work the you know it just works great 
As an aside, I will also mention that if you have a, uh, a Samsung phone, this is now switching gears real quick to the Android version of the app. If you have a Samsung phone and a Samsung TV or a TV that's capable of uh, doing um, screen mirroring as well on your Android device, you can actually do this as well with your Android dev device. But like I said, in the Android view, there's a lot of review, there's a lot of lag. Sorry, I had to pause for a moment there. I thought my microphone died, but it was actually, I must have pressed something on my keyboard. It was asking me if I want to enable dictation. I'm like, no, I don't want to enable dictation. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, the Android version, you can actually stream it to your TV if you've got a compatible TV that will stream Android devices. But uh, like I said, there is a lot of lag on the Android uh, version, but the iOS version works amazing. You know, 10 out of 10 for, you know, the, the, the large buttons, which I forgot to mention on the Android. The Android version has those large buttons as well and they specifically made those buttons large like that uh, you know because like I said the, the one of the developers his dad is visually impaired and they consulted with numerous people's with vi people with visual impairments through their uh, optometrist which I thought was very cool they did a lot of research and uh, it took them six months and 12 prototypes but in December of 2014 they launched the app in the iOS store and now they've got it on the Google Play store as well so kudos to them I love the story behind this and that he was trying to just make his dad's life a little bit easier and the re life easier for the rest of us by creating affordable app that can hopefully replace a CCTV. Now, I find that the blur is a little less with a traditional CCTV, but con considering spending thousands of dollars, you know, $3,000 plus for a CCTV versus like a dollar ninety nine US to I forget I still forget what it was two ninety something two fifty something it worked out to be Canadian uh, on the Canadian version of the app. You know it's uh, it's no contest. You know I think for the for the savings and the portability of your iPad or your iPhone. You know you can use this on the go and it beats spending thousands of dollars on a CCTV. So, so certainly something to consider um, if you're somebody who's got an iOS device. Definitely check it out. As far as a rating, I would give this, now the Android version I rated a 3.5, although in the App Store it had a 4.2. Uh, on my phone it just had so much lag, but on the iOS side, I absolutely would rate this a 4.5. The reason why I would rate it 4.5 and not a 5 out of 5 is just because if you are not wanting to take a picture and you would rather just kind of look at something live, I find that there's just like a little bit of, uh, like I said, that the text kind of blurs and disappears with the, with the uh, blue uh, background and yellow text and, and the black background and white text. But uh, other than that, that's really the only thing, that's the only downside that I can find on this app. It, the, the, the iOS version is everything that I hoped this app would be. So kudos to the folks over at visorapp.net, Sebastian, Andre, and Christian. You guys have made an amazing app and and I do mean that. I wouldn't, even, even if you guys didn't give me those lovely promo codes, you know, I still would think you made a, an amazing app. And that reminds me, don't forget that uh, I have, I am running my first ever subscriber appreciation contest. The folks over at visorapp.net have given me several app store codes for the iTunes store specifically to download and take advantage of their app. So it'll save you $1.99 US. And so if you want to win one of those codes, number one, you need to be a subscriber. Number two, you need to comment on one of my videos. Uh, number three, if you would like to have a, a double entry into the contest, if you share one of my videos on Facebook or Twitter and send me an email to circle the blind mice at gmail.com with your YouTube username as well as your Facebook and or Twitter name just so I can match things up and confirm that you are a subscriber and that you actually in fact did share my app or <laughs> share my app share my video then uh, you know I can make sure you get credit and get your two entries into the contest also as an addition some of my users are Android only users and so they don't have any need for the app even though they've been great and subscribing and commenting on my videos so uh, let's make it a bit easy here if you want to be entered into the contest please put a comment on this video specifically 
so that I know who to include and who not to include. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks again to the folks at visorapp.net and good luck to everybody with the contest. Again, it, the contest closes May 1st and I'll announce the winners on May 7th. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you in the next video. Here at Circle of the Blind Mice are bringing these videos because I believe technology enriches the lives of those of us with visual impairments. My mission is to help you learn tech, use tech, and embrace tech. Please share this video to help spread the word to your fellow blind mice. And if you're new here, please subscribe for new videos every Saturday. Thanks for watching.